Welcome to the Bellevue City Council meeting. It is Tuesday, December 17th, 2019, 6 p.m. We will uh, start off with the Pledge of Allegiance and followed by the invocation. So if you'd remain standing for that, Reverend Dr. Mike Elliott from First Pres Presbyterian Church is here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for those who are gathered here today to participate in the work of our beloved city. We thank you for your blessings, for life, for health, for all of the things you give us. We thank you for your love and grace and ask that you would let us offer that love and grace to each other, to friend and foe, to those we agree with and those whose ways and opinions seem beyond our understanding. You've created us to be in relationship, so help us to do that. Help us to put our trust and support in our elected officials, for you call us to do so. So too you call those who are called to serve, to serve with love and justice, with dignity and grace. We pray for our mayor, our city officials, our council, for all who are here to govern. We pray for the agenda set before them today. Give us an assurance of what would please you what would benefit those who live and work in and around our beloved city. Bless us also as we celebrate the season of light and joy and hope and freedom. Give us time of rest and peace and sharing. For it's in your blessed name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, Reverend. <clears throat> Call to order, Susan. Mr. Stinson? Here. Mr. Cook? Here. Mr. Shannon? Here. Mr. Preister? Here. Mr. Burns? Here. And Ms. Welch? Here. Thank you. This meeting is conducted in accordance with the Nebraska Open Meetings Act. A copy of that act is located on the rear wall of the council chambers. <clears throat> Item five, approval of agenda, consent agenda, claims, and advisory committee reports. <clears throat> 5A, approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Shannon, seconded by Burns. Please vote. No. Nope. Oops, sorry. Nope. I've got a couple of amendments to the agenda. Yep. Discussion. Go All ahead. right. I'd, I'd like to understand um, City Code 2 29 sets the agenda at Thursday at 4 o'clock. Yet Monday evening, we had our agenda altered. So I'd like to know who altered the agenda, with what authority they altered it, and do we need to declare an emergency so that we can add these items to the agenda because the agenda that we're required to put out to the public by City Code 2-29 by four o'clock on Thursday did not include these items. Do you need to respond? Please. Nebraska statute trumps any city code um, within the state of Nebraska and Nebraska revised statute 84-1411 Section 1A specifically states um, that the amended, the amended, sorry, the agenda shall not be altered later than 24 hours prior to the scheduled commencement of the meeting. And it doesn't speak to an emergency. It says you can amend it within that 24 hour period. So from six o'clock last night to six o'clock tonight, if there's an emergency, but you can amend it at any time 24 hours prior pursuant to um, 84-1411. Okay, so that's how 16 K and L got added to our agenda? Pursuant to law, it's, yes, you can add it at that time frame. Okay, and then on 16J, Councilwoman Welch has already declared that she has a conflict with this item, so she cannot bring a motion to reconsider when she's already declared a conflict. As discussed at the last city council meeting, Ms. Welch does not have a conflict um, in voting, it doesn't rise to the level of a conflict where you have to abstain um, in the Accountability and Disclosure Act. Additionally, pursuant to Robert's Rules of Order and City Code 2-93, any member who was uh, voting in favor of an ordinance can bring a motion to consider reconsider either at the end of the last meeting or the next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, so she's in compliance to bring that at this meeting since it's the next uh, scheduled meeting. Okay, 
then I would invoke city code 2-71 and request that my objections to this item remaining on our agenda be documented in the minutes so that the district court knows that the issue of her conflict was addressed during this meeting. Give me one second to review 2-71. Okay, so you're pursuant to 2-71, stating your protest, asking it to be reflected in the minutes. Um, Susan, if you look at 2-71 when typing the minutes, it talks about what shall be included in the minutes, so make sure you include his protest. And your reasons for your protest is that you believe that she has a conflict? Yes. Okay. That will be noted in the minutes. Thank you. Any further discussions or comments? Motion by Shannon, second by Burns. Uh, to approve the agenda, please let's vote. All voting yes. Thank you. Item 5B, approval of the consent agenda. Items marked with an asterisk are approved where this item is unless otherwise removed. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to, I'll make the motion, but I want to remove item 16A from consent just on the regular, to regular agenda. I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda with that amendment. Second. Motion by Cook, seconded by Preister with the amended agenda removing 16A. Is there any other items need to be removed from council members? Seeing none, please vote. All voting yes. Thank you, moves us to item number seven, special presentation 7A, swearing in of Quinn, a police electronic detection K-9. Her handler is Detective Roy Howell. Please come to the podium. <laughs> this is my uh, first swearing in, um, and it's K9, so bear with me. K9 Oath of Office. I, K-9 Officer Quinn, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially, without fear, favor, or affection, discharge my duties as a police K-9 officer for the city of Bellevue, Nebraska. I will support and uphold all the laws of the state of Nebraska, and I will bear true faith, loyalty, and allegiance to the same. I further swear and affirm that I will protect and serve the citizens of Bellevue. I will assist my handler in enforcing the law by searching for all electronic devices, used in suspected crimes by victims, witnesses, and suspects, and to be a goodwill ambassador for the city of Bellevue and the Bellevue Police Department. I understand the badge I wear is a symbol of public faith and trust, charging me to perform my duties impartially, without favor or ill will, and without regard to race, religion, political beliefs, or aspirations. So help me God. Moving on to uh, 7B, uh, we have a proclamation to recognize the merits of the Bellevue West football team for their second class A championship. Coach Huffman, if you come forward, please. Okay, a proclamation. Uh, whereas Bellevue West High School varsity football team wins the second class A state championship in the history of Bellevue West High School and Whereas the Thunderbirds wrapped up an undefeated season by beating Omaha Westside 35-0 in the state final game on a snowy and blustery night at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, which capped off a perfect 13-0 season. And whereas Jay Ducker closed out his record-setting senior season 
where he was named Nebraska Gatorade Player of the Year by rushing for 214 yards and added three touchdowns to his all-time state record behind his big offensive line, and junior Keegan Johnson added two more long touchdown runs while the Bellevue West defense was flying around making tackles all over the field and recorded their seventh shutout of the season. On this memorable night for all the players, coaches, families, and fans, and... Whereas Coach Mike Huffman has brought the state championship back to Bellevue community with help from the coaching staff of Mike Bikorski, Wade McVeigh, Jack Olent, Adam Hertz, Hertz, BJ Anderson, Trey Bradburn, Ron Pavlik, Brent Litz, Joe Gary, Luke Proco Procopio, Chase Reese, Jack Kalina, Kenneth Staskowitz, Rob Klug, Jerry Schumacher, Jake Perez and Mike Keller and student managers Jack Metton and Caleb Ollis, along with academic trainers Shannon Gear and Sidney Todd and all the players whose hard work and dedication resulted in this memorable championship season. Now I'm gonna have uh, each of the players come in and I'll have Coach Huffman introduce them. And if you wanna say anything first, that's, that's totally fine. Uh, honored to have that you're asking us to be here tonight. This is a special group of players. And as you've seen in some of the World Herald and Journal Star articles, talked about as possibly one of the best to ever play in the state of Nebraska. Uh, they finished number one in the state in scoring and uh, yardage on offense, and then also finished number one in the state in defense. And that's it's just never been done before. Fantastic group of kids. Uh, we're going to start off here. We got Nate Sullivan, a starter at wide receiver. Keegan Johnson, he's a receiver that was named All-State by the Lincoln Journal Star, Junior. This guy is the Gatorade Player of the Year, Javon Ducker, leading rusher, leading touchdowns of all time, uh, NSAA 110. Number 13, Evan Cleveland, senior quarterback. Number 16, All-Metro, Devin Mills, free safety, senior. Senior quarterback, all Nebraska, Super State for the Journal Star and World Herald. Quarterback, Nate Glantz, senior. Cruz Gerardo, senior, all Metro kicker. Senior defensive back, Jerome Houston, just committed to the University of Nebraska Kearney yesterday. Congrats, bud. Sophomore outside linebacker, Jaden Roberts. Junior captain, all Metro linebacker, Kier Kier, Junior. Yeah. Ooh. He brings Boys, the wood. Like defensive end. Right? <laughs> Senior linebacker, Anthony Garcia. Junior free safety. C.J. Lillenkamp. Sophomore defensive end, Caden Camise. They make them a little bigger than they used to, don't they? <laughs> repeat this next year, right? Right? Senior two-year first team All-Stater, uh, all World Herald and Journal Star. Our left tackle, Thomas Alt. Senior offensive guard, all Metro player, Caden Lind. Senior two year starter, center, Cameron Kodat. Senior all Metro defensive tackle, TJ Griffin. All Nebraska, all Super State defensive end, senior Matt Thompson. Senior second team all Nebraska, all Metro defensive tackle, senior David Shannon. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, John. So now therefore I, Rusty Hike, mayor of the city of Bellevue, Nebraska, do hereby urge the citizens of Bellevue to recognize the merits of the Bellevue West football team and to congratulate them for bringing the state championship to Bellevue. And I wore all the gold I had in my closet, too. Right here. All right. 
thanks. So item 7C, Sarpy County Economic Development Corporation, third quarter, third quarter update by Andrew Rainbow. Good evening, those are a couple of tough acts to follow right there, so I'll do my best. But I uh, was able to hand out uh, three, uh, uh, three handouts to you earlier, and I'm gonna start with our economic indicators that uh, this is our third quarter report. I know it's a, a little late uh, in the quarter to be able to get, uh, get here to do this, but uh, uh, so technically this is gonna be covering stuff that, to happen during the third quarter in Bellevue and across the county. I'll start uh, with building permit valuations, which we always track as a, a proxy for a, a total capital investment. Bellevue had a, a really good third quarter. They have almost uh, $57 million in building permit valuations. Uh, that compares to about 31 uh, in the third quarter of 2018. The county as a whole had, had a good quarter as well. Uh, uh, we almost doubled what we did uh, in the third quarter of last year, uh, largely due to a Facebook uh, uh, permit that was pulled in that quarter. So you take that out, uh, it's, it's very similar to what we did last year as well. Uh, I'm gonna jump down to uh, single family housing permits issued. Bellevue had 55 in the third quarter of 2019 as compared to 53 in the third quarter of 2018. So still uh, doing well there. Uh, the county as a whole was, had almost an identical number. We had 274 uh, housing permits pulled across the county in the third quarter of this year. We had 275 pulled last year. So uh, 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 overall, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about year-to-date uh, or, or through the third quarter, I should say, in a moment, but the uh, third quarter compares very fav favorably as to last year. On the multifamily housing side, Bellevue didn't have any uh, uh, apartments or multifamily units uh, approved uh, in the third quarter, but uh, across the county, we had 296 uh, as compared to 227 in the third quarter of 2018. So continue to see steady growth there. Labor force uh, is always kind of a good news, bad news type of thing for us. Uh, our labor force peaked this year in July at, a, at a 909, uh, sorry, 99,000 plus. Uh, we're down a little bit from then, but that's kind of seasonal uh, and, and, and not un unexpected. But uh, when you compare that to our peak last year of a little over 95,000, we've added across the county, we've added about 4,000 workers over the last year. So that's pretty phenomenal actually. Uh, and our uh, unemployment rate has stayed pretty, pretty steady. Uh, we're currently uh, at our last reading in September of 2.8% uh, compares to 2.5% of last year. So uh, again, it's good news, bad news. It's great uh, that, we've, that we're growing. It's, it's excellent, but uh, we're still, our, our labor force, or I should say our unemployment rate is, is low enough that it's probably holding us back a little bit as well. Uh, just gonna take a quick look at some of the, the year to date through the third quarter numbers here. Um, as, as far as building permit valuations, uh, Bellevue is down a little bit compared to last year, but not too much. Um, had a, and it's not uncommon across the county here. Uh, we've seen uh, $119 million, almost $120 million in permit valuations for Bellevue in 2019, then compared to about 140 last year. So uh, overall, pretty steady. Uh, on the single family housing uh, side, we've, through the third quarter, Bellevue had the exact same number of housing units uh, 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 permits issued uh, this year as we did last year at 127. Uh, but when you look at the county as a whole, we're down a little bit there. We had 680 housing uh, permits pulled uh, through the third quarter of 2019 that compared to 724 last year. Uh, we're down a little bit on multifamily uh, as compared to last year across the county. But the number that we're, we're really down on across the county is uh, subdivisions platted. Uh, in Bellevue, we're down a little bit. We had 121 uh, platted lots this year as compared to 228 through the third quarter. But across the county, uh, we have only had, only, I mean, it's still a very good number. We've had 609 uh, uh, lots platted. At that time last year, we were almost double that at 1,200. So starting to see maybe a little bit of slowdown there in the housing market. Uh, although it's also not necessarily good to be platting all these lots. Uh, and so uh, it's probably a natural pullback a little bit. Overall, um, I think our numbers uh, uh, on general will be a little lower across the county uh, this year than they were last year. But again, we've still got great growth going on. Last year was a, a, a very impressive year uh, and it's not necessarily to be sustained every year. So uh, not too worried, but we'll keep our eye on it. The next uh, document I'm gonna look at here is our uh, uh, report card for Sarpy County EDC. 
so this looks at uh, what we've done through the first three quarters of 2019 uh, in the, and, and also what we did in the third quarter. So uh, we landed one project uh, it was a, a spec building, uh, that was an industrial spec building. We counted about $10 million in investment in that. That was in addition to a, a, another uh, a development that was already going on. Uh, through three quarters, we landed four projects. Um, it, and at that point, it was about $17 million in investment. Uh, this was before we landed uh, officially landed our, our Google project, which added quite a bit of capital investment. Uh, compared to last year, uh, through three quarters, we landed six projects. I think we ended the year at six. We'll, we'll, we'll get, we've got to five. We might have a six project that we land this year, um, but somewhat similar there. Our project pipeline in the third quarter, uh, we opened up nine opportunities, which is pretty good for us. Uh, two existing uh, businesses and seven new to markets. Uh, when you look at uh, through three quarters, uh, what types of projects we've been working on. We've had 14 manufacturing projects, four office service projects, and five warehouse distribution. Uh, and a few years ago, that, those numbers between warehouse distribution and manufacturing were probably flipped. And so we're, we're seeing a lot of manufacturing, a lot of food manufacturing uh, related projects. Uh, and so uh, not all of them, but uh, we've, we've had some, some really good ones, uh, uh, some really good manufacturing projects uh, come in. Uh, not just in the third quarter, but all through last year. And our last line there is our business interactions. We always want to try to show that, you know, even though even when we're not landing projects, uh, we're still uh, engaging businesses across the county. Uh, we have uh, in the third quarter, uh, we had 16 uh, business retention expansion and that uh, visits. And that's where we go out to existing businesses and interview them about their current conditions and plans for uh, expansion uh, and and try to help them with that or make sure that uh, we're, or we're aiding any problems they might have. Uh, through three quarters, we had 37 of those visits. Our goal is 50. Um, we're gonna be pretty close to that, I think, if, if not hit that uh, by, the, by the end of the year here. Uh, this is last week, so we better get it uh, this week if we don't. Uh, we also had uh, three business assistances and, and 18 business assistances through the year. Uh, and those are projects where maybe we didn't count any capital investment or job uh, added. To, uh, to a business, but we did help them in some way. Uh, and so we wanna make sure we're counting that. And then the other one is uh, business and community interactions. And those are uh, where maybe we're just providing some kind of information to a, to a business to, uh, to help them grow in some way, but we can't really measure that other than that. We, uh, we interact with them and we help them, so, but we wanted to make sure people know that we're doing that. So that is uh, what Sarby County was working on in the third quarter and, and through, the, through the year to that point. Um, one of the other things that we do is we provide, an, uh, we started last year providing an annual return on investment for each of our communities. And since we're so close to the end of the year, I kind of wanted to give you guys a preview of what, uh, what, what we'll be talking about because we've pretty much got most of our numbers in. And so that's the, the last document that I gave you there is a Bellevue uh, annual return on investment. Uh, and the, the first uh, first line there or section looks a little bit at, at what we've done across the county. So fast forward to today, we've landed five projects and a capital investment of uh, 652 million plus. Uh, again, uh, most of that is with the, with the Google data center. Um, 152 new and retained jobs. And so that breaks down to 112 new jobs and 40 uh, retained jobs in Sarpy County. Specific to Bellevue, we've had two prospect visits uh, and so that compares, we've had five prospect visits across that have, have visited, uh, got boots on the ground on sites in Sarby County. Two of those came to Be Bellevue. Uh, we had 15 opportunities in which we submitted sites in Bellevue. So uh, I think we'll end up close to 30, if not uh, a little above 30 by the end of the year. So over half of our projects that we respond to, we include Bellevue sites or, biz uh, or, or buildings. And we've done that uh, 22 times. So we've had 15 projects with 22 uh, uh, submissions of sites or buildings. So on, on, on some projects, we've uh, uh, had more than one site. That, uh, typically, it's a site in Bellevue that we're submitting. Uh, over the last, this is probably about three years now, we spent 53, over $53,000 on site development. Most of that was on the, uh, the, the Bellevue city-owned site that we've been, had been working on. We had planned to spend another $30,000 on wetlands mit uh, mitigation planning on that site this year. Um, uh, luckily, unluckily, uh, we didn't spend that money before the flood. And so uh, we, we didn't end up spending that, that money uh, at, at all this year. I'll talk a little bit about our plans for next year. But we do have that, that, 
that we have 87 acres in there for certified go ready. It's really probably that 62 <laughs> acres that the, the city owns east of the ballparks that we've got certified as go ready. And we continue to market that as such. Uh, and then we've got some other things that we've done here. Seven business retention expansion meetings that we've had specifically with Bellevue companies. Uh, uh, three, we've got three projects that have come out of those visits. So we're working with three uh, Bellevue businesses to help them uh, expand here. Uh, 17 site development meetings. It's been a, a really our focus over the last several years is site development. We know that when we have a site that uh, is marketable, we're much more competitive. And so we continue to uh, focus in on getting another site in Bellevue in addition to the one that we have now. Uh, 17 investor re or seven investor re relation me meetings, 21 business and community interactions, five business assistances, and then three speaking engagements also in Bellevue. So looking forward, uh, we did recently approve our strategic uh, plan for the next two years as well as our budget. Uh, and specific to Bellevue, I would say um, we've uh, budgeted dollars to uh, looks, look at the kind of the LB840 area after the flood and say, all right, what are we gonna do to help move this forward? So we've got about $60,000 uh, in our budget for what we're calling planning activities. And so don't know exactly what that looks like just yet. And we'd like to work with the city to figure out how we can help move that area forward uh, and ma make sure that it's uh, competitive and marketable or, for the, and what, what, is, what exactly is its highest and best use and how do we move forward? So that's one area that we're gonna spend money on. And then the other, uh, I mentioned site development. Uh, we'd really like to uh, get another site here in Bellevue uh, that's, that's uh, probably in a different location so we can have a couple of options. I've been working with uh, the mayor and, and Jim on on uh, a site that we are trying to zero in on, um, but uh, if we can get that, we'll, I think we can be pretty competitive as, as we put, move that through our uh, due diligence program. And so we'd like to get that to a, a go ready uh, status as well and have two go ready sites in the city of Bellevue. Um, so with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, sorry to go on for so long there. Any questions for Adam or Andrew? Andrew, I'm um, just, um, I'm assuming, I mean, all these people, you aren't gonna have a contact with the city um, when you're just, when we're dealing with Bellevue, but who's your contact? Would it be Jim, me? Do you work with the chamber or how? Um, typically, uh, I'm happy to work with the chamber. Most of our uh, projects are more kind of industrial in, in nature. So typically we've been, um, uh, uh, connecting with Jim on those. Sometimes some of the projects we've been working on, I know have come to the city kind of in addition to us. Uh, and I saw, so I know we've been working on a, a few projects uh, kind of parallel. Um, but your contact would directly be Jim for. That's what, that's what it has been, yeah. Okay. okay. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you, Andrew. All right, thank you. Move on to number eight, organizational matters, 8A, election of the city council president for 2019. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to elect Don Preister as our, I'm sorry? Nominate. I would like to nominate council member Don Preister as our council president. I'll second that. Any other nominations on the floor? Uh, we have a nomination of Don Preister, so I don't know there's no other nominations. Go ahead, Bree. There is just one clarification on 8A, that it's the council president for 2020. I think um, the clerk's office fixed that on the agenda this afternoon, but it should be 2020, not 2019, just for clarification purposes. Okay. Effective tonight. Effective tonight, but it will be moving forward, yes. Okay. So motion by Cook, second by Shannon to uh, elect uh, Don Preister as the council president. Any questions, comments? Please vote. All voting yes. Thank you. Item nine, approved citizen communication. No requests have been received. Mm -hmm. Item 10, liquor licenses. There are none. Item 11, ordinances for adoption. Third reading, none. Item 12, ordinances for public hearing. Second reading, none. Item 13, ordinances for introduction, first reading, 13A, ordinance number 3985, 
request to amend section 19-3 of the Bellevue City Code pertaining to the non-exclusive illustrative list of examples of public nuisances. Susan, could you read that ordinance, please? An ordinance to amend section 19-3 pertaining to the non-inclusive illustrative list of examples of public nuisances that exist pursuant to the definitions in section 19.2 to repeal such section as heretofore existing in 19-3 and to provide for the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. That second reading and public hearing will be held January 21st, 2020. Just a question, Mayor. Yep. What's driving that one? I don't know if it's appropriate to have discussion right now since it's just first reading. Um, I, we do it all the time though. So I'm just asking, I've got, I've got public input on this already. Okay. So in preparation for the public hearing next time, people want to know what's driving this. What are, we, what are we addressing here? There have been some complaints that have been brought forward regarding this specific issue. Um, it's something that you see in other cities as well where this is included in the, the city code um, as a public nuisance. Um, so we're amending the, or proposing an amendment um, to address some of those issues that have been brought forth. Anything specific you want to address? Uh, I believe just because they're private citizen complaints that have been addressed, I don't want to specifically open, but there have been some violations or at least one that I know of recently that's been presented to the city administrator for an appeal um, after a violation was issued and uh, the city code did not address it. So obviously she won the appeal, um, but it's to be consistent with other cities as well and address the issue um, for the complaints that we're receiving. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Item 14, public hearing on matters other than ordinances. None. Item 15, resolutions, 15, did I go there already? Nope. 15A, resolution number 2019-41, request to vacate the final plat of lots 1 through 16, Sherwood Estates, applicant Jerry Standerford. Jerry's here if anybody has any questions. Um, but I need a motion for that. Councilman Cook. I'll make a motion we approve agenda item 15A. Second. Motion by Cook, seconded by Stenson. Any further discussion? Questions or comments? Seeing none, please vote. All voting yes. There you go. Did you want to say something, Jerry? No, I took right. question. Thank you. <laughs> Item 15C, resolution number 2019-42, request approval to operate a satellite keynote location at the business operated by Industrial Social Hall doing business under the name Knights Event Center at 1020 Lincoln Road and authorizes the mayor to sign. I'm John Hassett, uh, just here if you have any questions, I'm with the keynote. Make a motion to approve 15B. Second. Motion by Stenson, seconded by Burns. Any further comments or questions for John? Please vote. All voting yes. Thank you. Item 16A, approval of the request for release of funds for CDBG 2019 projects and authorized submittal to HUD, not to exceed $480,531.35. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion to approve 16A. Second. Motion by Cook, seconded by Preister. Any further comments, questions? Please vote. All voting yes. Thank you. Item 16B, approved budgeted purchase of computers for 2019 and 2020 not to exceed $50,266. Councilman Pricer. Thank you, Mayor. I will move to approve 16B. I'll second that. Motion by Pricer, seconded by Welch. Any comments, questions? Please vote. All voting yes. 
Thank you. Item 16C, request approval of the yearly renewal of street agreement and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement with the Nebraska Department of Transportation for maintenance agreement number five, not to exceed $21,859. Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move to approve item number 16C. Second. Motion by Preister, seconded by Burns. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes. Thank you. Item 16D, request approval of the agreement and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement with Elliott Equipment Company for a high-pressure water jetter truck mounted not to exceed $285,385.15. Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move to approve 16D. Second. Motion by Preister, seconded by Burns. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Councilman Shannon. Is Epiphany here? Okay, so we're spending 285,000 on a jetter, okay? Now we have a combo truck that's already a jetter, but I'm assuming that it's the water capacity of this tanker that you're going for, so I don't have a problem with that. When are we spending the 30,000 on the WW133 unit? The 30,000 on the what? In our packet, it says that you're gonna buy a new truck Oh, and okay. then you're going to spend 30000 repairing the engine in the second truck. Yes. And then you're going to sell a third truck. Then we'll sell a third one, correct. Okay. When are we spending the $30,000? Uh, just as soon as we can uh, get time to get it down there and get it fixed. Okay. So it is could that, be at any time. Is that in the budget for this year? It is. Okay. So it's both are done. And then what do you anticipate, just ballpark number, that we're going to get out of uh, selling the third unit? Because it's 20 years old. Um, I think we figured we could probably get maybe 10 to 15 for it. Okay. Thousand. All right. Thank you. But we're going to put it on the auction, so it just depends on what they what it comes up to. Okay. Will that flow back to offset the cost? Set? That'll come back to pay for probably the engine. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Any further questions? Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I, I also read in the packet that we are first purchasing the new truck, and then once it's here, then we can refurbish, so we've always got a backup, right. and I think that makes good sense. Okay. Any further questions? Motion by Preister, second by Burns. Please vote. All voting yes. Thank you. 16E, request approval of the agreement and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement with the Nebraska Department of Traffic Signal Phasing not to exceed $32,193. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I'll make a motion we approve 16E. Motion by Cook, seconded by Stenson. Any comments or questions? Councilman Chan. All right, I just want clarification that this would be setting the timing on 370, basically from the Kennedy Freeway to 48th. Is that what I understand, Jeff? Uh, this would go from Arboretum to yeah, 48th Street. Okay. In the packet, it kept saying the north side. So are we only doing the westbound lanes, or are we timing both directions? No, that'll tie everything together. Okay, I didn't understand why it kept saying the, the northbound side. Yeah, that's just where all the interconnects are at. Okay, so, so we are timing so, the lights in both yeah. east and west directions. They'll all be interconnected, yes, yeah, so they can talk to each other. And uh, then they can be monitored uh, via computer. Okay, so that should increase traffic flow considerably. Hopefully that's the purpose of it, yes. Okay, thank you. Any more comments? Motion by Cook, second by Stenson, please vote. All voting yes. Thank you, 16F, accept the proposal from Cornhusker International Henderson Equipment and approve the purchase of various pieces of equipment, uh, six snowplow trucks in an amount not to exceed $174,176 per truck 
for a total of $1,045,056 total. Okay. Councilman Stenson? Make a motion we approve 16F. Second. Motion by Stenson, seconded by Preister. Any comments, questions? Please vote. All voting yes. Thank you, 16G, approval of school resource officer, program memorandum and understanding with Omaha Public Schools to provide one uniform police officer to Bryan Middle School and one uniform police officer to Bryan High School as school resource officers. Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move to approve 16G. Second. Motion by Preister, seconded by Cook. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes. Thank you. 16H, approve the renewal of the service agreement for the life pack AEDs and authorize the mayor to sign the service agreement. <coughs> Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move to approve 16H. Second. Motion by Preister, second by Cook. Any comments, questions? Please vote. All voting yes. Thank you. Item 16I, approve the two, 2020 insurance plans and premiums. Well, you here for questions or you want to? To answer any questions. Okay. Let me uh, get a motion. <clears throat> I move that we approve item 16I. I'll second that. Motion by Burns, second by Welch. <clears throat> and discussions or questions for our insurance gurus seeing none um, please vote by the way this is my associate Jim Garbina uh, from the Harry Coke company and um, we greatly appreciate having you all as clients all voting yes thank yep. you uh, let Jim say something here. I just want to thank Mike um, and his team, I mean, they did a fantastic job, again, negotiating. Really, it was a reduction in our cost, but it's a 0% increase to our employees, and then we're able to take what the reduction is and put it in our reserve for if we, our, our claims are in excess of what we anticipated. Right. So it'll also protect us for next year should yes. our experience not be as favorable. So, Mike, I want to thank you guys again for doing your part to, to represent us and getting us a good year again here. So it's kind of unheard of. I don't think anybody else has experienced a, we're doing a reduction pretty good. or a 0% yeah. gain. So, but we're, I'll let you comment. I think we're, we're very, very Yeah, the, the normal rate increases have been larger this year than uh, kind of where we've been in the last four or five years. So we're seeing uh, significant increases in the smaller group market 16 17 percent in the large employer market six seven eight percent so to go this uh time with a reduction is a, a big thing um and, and we're, we're glad, glad we, we could, could present it to yeah. you yeah <laughs> thank you thank you very much kind of like bellevue west thank we're going to make sure we repeat our championship next year so we're kind of yes. counting on you guys again and you know what's really nice is that was my alma mater they had a zero, so <laughs> I was very happy for Bellevue West. Thank you all. Thanks, Mike. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. Nelson Pricer. Thank you, Mayor. I, <coughs> turn it off. I too want to say thank you. Not only thank you for negotiating a, a good plan, but to our public employees who also work to cut their cost and to enroll in our wellness programs so that they are staying healthier, we have fewer premium charges, and therefore we look better to the market. So it's kudos to you for getting the plan for us, but also to our employees and to the council having the wisdom and the administration to keep supporting our public employees' wellness programs. It all works together. Thank you. All right. We voted. Yep. So we're good. 
Sorry. Okay, 16J, approve the motion to reconsider and to revote regarding amendments to ordinance number 3978 as it pertains to removing the removal from office language throughout such ordinance. Mr. Mayor. Councilwoman Welch. I'd like to make a motion to reconsider the vote on ordinance number 3978 that was voted on December 3rd, 2019. Second. Uh, motion by Welch, seconded by Preister. To reconsider the vote on ordinance number 3978 as it was voted on December 3rd, 2019. Any comments or questions? Mr. Mayor. Yes. It is with a renewed resolve, but also a tinge of disappointment that I bring this matter up for reconsideration. I struggled with this issue and weighed public comment on both sides of the debate in recent weeks. In my personal deliberations, I removed the individual characters and personalities and made my decision based on the merits of the proposed remedies. For these reasons, I voted for what I saw at the time as a compromise in hopes that we would at least acknowledge the need for a standard of more civility and professionalism in these chambers. But I now can say that objective has not and will not be realized with the current ordinance. Three factors weighed on my decision to reconsider. Number one, after voting for the compromise on the prevailing side, I felt the council had an opportunity to come together as one to endorse civility toward the public and decency towards our employees. Instead of uniting, Mr. Shannon cast the only vote against the ordinance in its final form. There was no vote of reconciliation towards the greater public good. It is hard to imagine now that there would ever be such progress. Number two, after the last meeting, Mr. Shannon took his turn with the media and used it to lash out, including an attack on the personal integrity of Mayor Hike. I'd already been targeted by Mr. Shannon, but he proved his invective could what? seek to diminish Diminish additional victims. It seems our cannot be calling second. people out by name here. Hold this on is one it. Second. All right. I this think is just more inappropriate conduct by Councilwoman Welch. Okay. Answer. I believe that Ms. Welch can make her statement if you would like her to admit your name. She can read it without admitting your name. But I That's believe that fine, she can make her statement. The firm does not allow attacking people personally. It's supposed to be kept generic. All right. So let's maintain some decorum here, even though it's her reading. Ms. Melch, I would ask that would you finish your statement if you could just omit Mr. Shannon's name, please. I'll be happy to. I'd already been targeted by the council member, but he proved his invective could seek to diminish additional victims. It seems our compromise did nothing to calm the waters, but merely served to embolden our council member in his destructive shenanigans. Number three, I have since talked with city employees who feel powerless to challenge the bad behaviors of a council member. It has come to my attention that incidents of employees' intimidation and inappropriate remarks had also occurred with a past member of the city council. This convinced me this ordinance was not about one person, but about preserving the integrity of our, of our elective office and protecting the public and our employees from crude and hurtful behavior. The Nebraska legislator created the statute related to this ordinance in 1994 for this exact scenario. The statute has never been revised or removed since that time. It is there for a purpose. At the time of our last vote, I had hoped we could avoid this more severe wording, but I'm reminded that this council member did not pay his election fines owed the state of Nebraska until the legislature created a statutory requirement to pay such. Hold on one second. This has no bearing on what's before the city council here tonight. This is just pure inappropriate. Let me look at the city code. Just give me a second. Do you have a specific item that you're looking at, Mr. Shannon, regarding Mrs. Welch's statement that you can point my attention to? In the code of conduct, you cannot make personal attacks on people and what she's talking about is not relevant to the item on the agenda right now. Thank you. 
So you have the right under 2-62 to do a point of order, which you've done. At this time, the city code states that the presiding officer shall determine all points of er order subject to the right of any councilman to appeal to the council. If any appeal is taken, the question shall be, quote, shall the decision of the providing o presiding officer be sustained? A majority vote shall conclusively determine such question of order. So at this time, I would like Mr. or Mayor Hike um, to determine the point of order, whether or not he believes that it, it is any a violation, and then we'll have a vote, majority vote will determine the question of order. Is okay. that your understanding in the city code? That is correct. Okay, so Mayor Hike, please state your position on the point of order, and then we'll have a vote. If it's challenged. If it's challenged. Yeah. To allow whether or not to yes. start or finish. Um, I think uh, since there's been public accusations made in the public, I'm, I'm, I would let her finish. Then I will challenge and call for a vote because she's not talking about that. She's talking about fines assessed back in 2003, okay? Clearly inappropriate. Do you want to hear what my opinion is? Go ahead. My opinion is, is that it's connected to the reason that she brought the motion to reconsider and it's something that she's considering, which she can consider pursuant to Robert's Rules of Order, um, which changed her mind or adds into the total totality of circumstances of why she changed her mind. And that would be my opinion on the matter. Um, but at this time, you've appealed the decision, and so we need to have a vote on whether or not it's a point of order violation. If you vote yes, it is a po point of order violation, then Ms. Welch will stop. If you vote no, then Ms. Welch will be allowed to continue. Can I make a comment? Go ahead. I, I would ask Bree, if she is stating a fact, where where is that making allegations and saying, uh, I don't know the word I want to use, but she, she is not, I'm alleging, I believe, I think, she is stating a fact, and that fact is known, did occur, and that is what she is, one of her points that she is using for her justification and reasoning to bring this back for reconsideration. Does that have any effect on this? I do, and give me one second because I want to pull up the policy, Resolution 35, that was voted on at the last meeting. Because that specifically talks about decorum and stuff as well. Give me one second. Policy Resolution 35, which was adopted at the last city council meeting on December 3rd, states that you cannot have, you can't make statements that involve personal or slanderous attacks on individuals. Um, I do agree that what Mr. Cook is stating, if it's a factual presentation, um, then I, I wouldn't view that as a personal attack. I don't, it's not the same as if she's attacking like what you're wearing tonight or you know, those sorts of things. So I do believe that there's a, there's a difference there. No vulgar, threatening, abusive, disparaging language, inappropriate sexual behavior, remarks, racial or ethnic slurs. I don't believe that that would fit. I haven't heard any of those. Would, approve, would fit. I don't know. I don't know if it's disparaging if she's stating her understanding of a fact. Uh, would be the only line there. I believe it's up to the city council to determine whether there's been a point of violation, a point of order violation. You guys know what the city code is. You know what the policies are. Uh, I think at this time we should have a vote and let you, as a collective body, determine whether or not we proceed. All right. Point, point on the uh, of clarification because I think you misstated what we're voting on. We're voting to sustain Rusty's call. Correct. If I misstated that, I apologize. If you vote yes. You're voting that 
there's no point of order violation. Right. If you're voting no, then you're stating there is a point of order violation. If I misstated that, I apologize. So okay. Thank you for the clarification. A no, a yes means she can the continue. statement continues. Yes. Just to be clear, because you guys were all going to vote yes and stop her. I appreciate that. Okay. Fair is fair. So we have a second. Give me a second on that. Did second we have a is second? not required. Oh, yeah, you're okay. right. It's a, go forward. All right. So vote yes or no on the. Uh... Bree, would you help me clarify that one more time? If a vote of yes means what and a vote of no means what? If you vote yes, you're sustaining, you're agreeing with Mayor Hike's position that it is not a point of order violation. So if you vote yes, Ms. Welch will continue reading her statement. If you vote no, Ms. Welch will end her statement where she left off and will not continue. And do I vote? My advice would be that you abstain. Okay. And you can take that for whatever it's worth. Okay. Please vote. We have four yes votes, one no vote with Mr. Shannon voting no, and one abstention with Kathy, Ms. Welch abstaining. All right, please finish your statement. As elected officials, we're held to a higher standard. We take an oath. Some honor the oath to do the best we can to represent our community, but power can also be used to abuse others. We must remember that we are here to serve our citizens, to protect a safe work environment for city employees and to promote forward progress for Bellevue. I want to restore civility to our public life in Bellevue, restore pride in our community and reduce the consistent embarrassment inflicted on Bellevue by the antics we have continued to endure. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? I would just make a comment procedurally here so it's clear. There's a motion to reconsider by Welch, a second by Pryster. If you vote yes, then you are voting to reconsider the motion and we'll go back to the original 3978 prior to Mr. Cook's amendments and prior to Mr. Burns' amendments. So if you vote yes, we go back and we can re reconsider 3978. If you vote no, then you're voting that you're not reconsidering and you want it to stand as voted on at the last meeting. Just wanted to make that clarification. Thank you. Seeing no further comments, please vote. We have three yes votes and three no votes with Mr. Stinson, Mr. Shannon, and Mr. Burns voting no. Mayor votes yes. Motion carries. So procedurally at this time we would need a motion to approve ordinance 3978. And then we can do the subsequent amendments if those are placed on the table. I'll make a motion that we approve ordinance 3978. Second. Can I have an amendment? I'd like to, okay. is it? Motion by Cook, seconded by Pryster. Okay. I'd like to make an amendment. And I apologize, I don't have it in front of me, but on the point where we say you can be removed from a committee, I want to add you can be removed from a task force. And if you're council president, you could be removed as council president. Three, is that the two changes I had made? Those are the changes you made, and that would be in paragraph A. Ten C. You would add task force removal from task force and council president. That's correct. Second. Should we vote so on that amendment? We have first? a motion by Cook, seconded by Preister to amend as stated by Councilman Cook. Any questions on that amendment? Again, for clarification, can you clarify, please, what 
a yes and a no vote is, please. At this time, if you vote yes, you are voting only for the amendments to add the task force and council president language into those sections I previously stated. If you vote no, you're stating that you do not want the task force or council president provisions added to the amendment. This is only on the amendment, not on the entirety of the ordinance. Please vote. One away. All voting yes. Thank you. <clears throat> and then at this time, procedurally, if Mr. Burns would like to remake his motion or if anybody else on the council would like to make the motion before you can or any other amendments, otherwise we would proceed on the original motion from Cook and then Pricer on the ordinance as amended. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to bring back, I would like to make an amendment that the removal of an elected official is brought back into the ordinance. You don't have to make a motion to do that. So we had a motion to reconsider, okay, I'm sorry. which takes us back to yeah. the original 3978 as originally written at the beginning of December 3rd meeting. Okay. And then the amendment on task force and president was just added. So as we sit right now, removal from office is still in the ordinance. So if there's no other amendments, we would I'll vote on that. All right, I'll offer the amendment then okay. to strip uh, 3978 of removal language. Bob, you get a second? Motion by Shannon. Okay, motion fails. Any other uh, amendments? Questions? Discussion. All right, I think we have agreement that uh, Robert's rules reserves discipline to the city council, okay? That's why we've changed the ordinance the way we've changed it, so that discipline is contained within the city council. Is that agreed? In 3978, discipline would only be by a vote of the city council, as outlined, yes. The city administrator would have no role in that. Okay, so the executive branch or the city is having no role whatsoever. This is all a function of the city council. Correct. Um, minus the questioning from myself as outlined in there um, and the initial acceptance of the um, complaint by Susan, but the, the votes for any discipline, whether it's reprimand or removal, would be solely the council. Okay. And the state statute that you're citing is a grant of power to the city. Well, it says a city of the first class may by ordinance, adopt an, adopt an ordinance for removal of an elected official. Right. And so the city, by ordinance, by you voting, or by the, the vote to adopt this ordinance, it would be the city adopting an I'd, ordinance. I'd like an exact vote. reading of the statute. Sorry, say that again? I'd like an exact reading of the statute. Oh, pull it up. I got it. Sixteen dash two one seven in Nebraska Revised Statute. The heading the is officer. Yeah. Sorry. Just the first sentence. Just yeah. the first sentence. Okay. A city of the first class by ordinance may provide for the removal of elective officers of the city for misconduct. So if this ordinance is approved, the city by this governing body is adopting an ordinance to provide for the removal of the elected officials of the city for misconduct. All right. So thank it, you. it would be in compliance with that. All right, thank you. Councilman Prester. I would just ask for clarification. I believe it still has within it a unanimous or a five vote requirement and the offending person would be not voting. That's correct. Anything up to removal from office, so the written reprimand, public, and loss of seniority or removal from task force, those sorts of things is a majority vote. The 
removal from office is a unanimous vote by everybody except for the accused party. That party would abstain from the vote and it would have to be a unanimous vote from the rest of the council in order to remove an elected official. So it's an even higher bar than it is for the reprimands or the other things. And it's again at the end of the line and would require a unanimous vote. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, amendments? Councilwoman Welch. Just again, because of clarification, can you clarify the yes and the no vote, please? Absolutely. So at this time, if you vote, it would be a vote to approve Ordinance 3978 as written previously prior to the amendments on December 3rd. So it would include everything, including removal from office. It would also include the approved amendments to add task force and council president that was voted on tonight. So if you vote yes, you're adopting the ordinance with the removal from office still in there. If you vote no, you are voting against the ordinance as written. Does that help clarify? Yes, ma'am, thank okay. you. Any other questions, comments? So we have a, a motion by Cook, seconded by Preister, to approve the ordinance 3978 as amended with uh, uh, Councilman Cook's amendment. Everything else remains the same. Please vote. We have three yes votes and three no votes with Mr. Stinson, Mr. Shannon, and Mr. Burns voting no. Mayor votes yes. Motion carries. Takes us to item 16K, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the release and settlement agreement regarding the retirement of Police Chief Mark Elbert. Councilman Burns. I move that we approve item 16, 16K. Second. I'll second that. <clears throat> Motion by Burns, second by Welch. Any comments, questions? From council, Councilman Shannon. Yeah, can, can I see a show of hands from the audience? Is there anyone here to comment on this tonight? All right, we only have one person here tonight. All right, I just wanted to know what the, what the audience attendance was on this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm troubled by this item. Um, I'm troubled by the last minute nature. I'm troubled by the lack of notice to the public. Um, troubled by the uh, item just. If Council we are going to have a discussion, should we go into closed session? I don't no. no. We could. We would need a motion and a second and a vote to go into closed session. I I mean, I, I mean, as long as we're good, I just don't want to really get into a discussion. I kind of just, so, that. Make a motion. Do you have more to say on it? Oh, yeah. I would like to go into closed session. I move that we go into closed session. Um, how do I? Be pretty exact, please. You want me to do it? For the protection of the public, I move that we go into closed session. Uh, those attending closed session will be members of the City Council, the Mayor, Bree Robbins, and City Administrator, Jim Bristow. Tani King. And Tani King. And Ashley Decker. Ashley Decker? Yes. HR. HR. Oh, HR. Okay. Can you say Rich Severson? No. Why would we need him? No. Okay. Okay. K and L. And go for both K and L. Do we need to say all sides of that? All right, to discuss items J and L. K. K and L. No, that's fair enough. Mr. Shannon, your motion was to go into closed session at this time to protect the public interests. 
And in closed session, you're inviting all city council members, city administrator, and the mayor, city administrator Jim Maristo, myself, city attorney Bree Robbins, paralegal Tani King, and HR director Ashley Decker. Is that a fair recitation of your motion? It is. And that was seconded by Welch. Councilman Burns. Oh, sorry. Yep. Then discussion and vote. Any discussion on the closed session? Please vote. Okay. Please vote on the closed session. All voting yes. Okay, there was a motion by oh, Shannon. Sorry. Don't read that. Motion by Shannon, second by Burns. Go in closed session, we'll go in closed session and then see the time. Don't do that. There was a motion by Shannon, second by Burns to go into closed session, which we will do in the side conference room. It is 7 11.
Yep. And we'll vote on the coming out of closed session. And then we'll go back to the item. Okay. All right, I think we're back live. Um, there was a motion by Stenson and second by Burns to come out of closed session. Any discussion? Um, it is now 7.42, and we are out of closed session. Oh, we need to vote. Please vote. Well, it's just come on coming out of closed session. Now we got to go back to the main. Okay. All voted yes. Thank you. I mentioned the timer. Nope, you already did. All right, so we are on uh, 16K. Um, prior to going into closed session, we had a motion by Burns, seconded by Welch, to approve the authorize to approve and authorize the mayor to sign the release and settlement agreement regarding the retirement of Police Chief Mark Albert. Councilman Shannon. Yeah, I, can, can I ask Bree to summarize for the public and the press the closed session items you feel can be disclosed so that they have some understanding of, you know, what, what we're doing here, why we're doing it, what we're trying to accomplish. Whatever you feel comfortable saying, I, I think that better comes from you. Pursuant to the amendment in the city ordinance that we adopted December 3rd, we would need a motion and a second and a majority vote to disclose those conversations. So I, I would I would want that on the table and voted on before I would disclose those conversations. All right, I'll, I'll make the motion for you to disclose what you feel comfortable with so that the public and that the press knows what went on. Do we have a second? Motion failed. We don't want to inform the public. Come on, I, I guys. Just, it was closed session. I, I have a city code that was adopted pretty... December 3rd, and without a majority vote, the specific items that were discussed in closed session can't be brought forward. Councilman Cook. I don't know if this is appropriate. Could we open up for public discussion, just see if anybody wants to comment on it or not? I mean, I would make that. I don't know if anybody wants to speak about it, but I think there was only one person who raised their hand. Well, let's have them question. talk. I oh, us? Can we? Well, I, I just would like. That, that doesn't give them any information about what went on and why. Well, everything was attached to our agenda, you know, what we got. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they definitely, if, uh, uh, I'll make a motion we open up to public input. If it's not seconded and approved, that's fine. I'm just. We got I'll second it. Motion by Cook, seconded by Shannon to open it up for public input. Any comments? I would like to open up for a KNL, just so that if someone wants to make a comment, they can make it on both. Thank you. Motion made by Cook, seconded by Shannon to Just to confirm, Shannon, do you still second that opening up both? Yes. Okay. Uh, to open up uh, 16K and 16L for public hearing. Any comments or questions? Please vote. We have five yes votes, one no vote with Mr. Burns voting no. Thank you. So I will open up uh, 16K and 16L for public uh, hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to uh, come forward and speak regarding those items? Just for the record, do you want to read 16L? Uh, 16L is to approve and authorize the mayor to sign the employment agreement with Mark Elbert for the community development director position.
Good evening. My name is Michael Wills. I live at 1321 Harrison Street here in Bellevue. First thing, on, I'm not worried about uh, the first one about the chief uh, retiring. I will. Everybody should retire when they can. Um, my sec, my the one I'm upset about is the second half of that. Where's the money coming from? Was it in the budget for 2020? Um, is this a new job? Because I couldn't find it anywhere listed in the city. Um, was this job put out for anybody, or is this just hey, let's put this guy in here because we want to? Um, what is the job description? Uh, what is does it entail? Job description is attached. Uh, and the other thing that I'm upset about, I'm sorry that Mr. Roberts isn't here because it directly impacts on him. And that is, we still don't have a parks director or a, a cemetery director. We fired, or <clears throat> I'm sorry, he went on to bigger and better things. And that has not been, and if we can't afford to have a parks director and a cemetery director, then we sure as heck don't need uh, somebody else moving in uh, to a job that's never been here in the uh, city before. You people are stu doing too much behind closed doors and doing it too quickly. Thank you. Ms. Thank Wilson, you. Can I, yes, sir. Let me address those because um, and you're going to have to help me remember everything you asked. That's okay. I'll, 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 I'll reiterate them. But the money's in the budget. The position is a budgeted position. So we reorganized our planning department, which opened up funds, and then this position was identified actually all the way back in our strategic planning earlier this year, and then we budgeted it for this upcoming year. So there is funds available in our budget for that position. Okay. This position was advertised. I don't have the exact dates, but this was open to the public. This summer, we interviewed for that job. Because I keep a check on those, by the way. Yep. I never saw it, so that's why I asked. Yep, that, that position was advertised and open to the public. Our chief applied for that job. Um, we interviewed six, we had six candidates. We interviewed three that were qualified for the position. And actually one was a city administrator in another city. <laughs> um, I should step down and take this job, but uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, so we felt that out of that, so uh, HR and I did the interviews together and Chief Albert actually scored the highest of all candidates. Okay. We have all the, all the hope and trust in the world that he is the right candidate. So we do have Obviously. the right guy for the job. The money's there, the direction there. There is a job description that is sitting in our packet back there. I don't know if you've got a chance to look at our agenda packet, but there is a I, job I description. I get what I get off the internet, and then that's it, because not, you're not allowed to take anything off the table. Yes, and this position, uh, one of the, the larger things when we first came on was creating a one-stop shop type mentality here. This position would be that, so P&I, planning, code enforcement, all these will be combined up underneath this department, which this, this director will oversee that. Nice. What we're looking to do is streamline those operations so they all work well together, along with economic development for our city to target in on very specific uh, uh, entities that could come to our city. <clears throat> what am I missing here on the other question? So your I think parks- you I, on, Honestly, except for uh, why you haven't got a new parks, so, which is another- <laughs> Right. For another parks, night, not tonight. No, at our parks department, we reorganized. So that's that's a, another strategy we have working mm -hmm. through. We have Jim Shada is the interim director that's overseeing parks and recreation. And I'll tell you, Jim is doing a fantastic job. I don't think ever in our history that we've gone through an entire summer without a complaint on the park. We've had zero complaints this year on our parks. So for him overseeing it, I think we're to a finalization of what we'll do as far as how that goes. We have Jason Hotelling, who sits in our cemetery. Does it sit in our cemetery? Again, because I can't find him. Jason Hotelling, so he's running the cemetery. He's not. But he's a worker down at the cemetery, yeah, isn't he? He's not necessarily directed as a director or a manager for that. So he goes back to, um, do you need a manager overseeing a worker? That's for another so night. Jim no. Shada oversees that position too. We've got a lot of things moving. I think you saw that we just had the approval for the uh, memorial. Uh, to mm -hmm. the last council meeting. Yes. Jason is the one that took that by the horns and moved mm -hmm. it forward, got all the information and is moving that project ahead. So we do have the right people and the right jobs because doing I, the right things. I hope that answers it. Mm -hmm. Did I miss I'll, anything? I'll talk about the cemetery. In the okay. Councilman Prester. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, 
Jim Ristow gave a good description. What I would add to that, Mr. Wills, and I appreciate you asking the question, is that we currently have an allowance for an assistant or deputy administrator. That position, we had somebody in, Larry Burks, mm -hmm. and he left the city. Mm -hmm. We have not refilled that position that was two for years ago. a little under a $100,000 mm -hmm. fee. We also had a planning director, and that position is left and has been unpaid for probably a month or mm -hmm. so, okay. and that's approximately 100000 We've combined those two positions. If you look at the job description that's online or mm -hmm. that's out in the lobby, you will see a very comprehensive list of responsibilities and duties okay. that incorporate both an assistant city administrator, a planning director, code enforcement, a host of things. Mm -hmm. This job and this position, and if Mr. Elbert is put into it tonight, he's going to be a very busy person mm -hmm. and he's going to earn every bit. And at the same time, the city's going to save money through a restructuring and a reorganization, which is a part of what this administration is looking at, not only in this area, but throughout the city. And I think we're going to see some efficiencies and some cost savings and some improvement in services that I think everybody will be very happy with. And I apologize for not knowing, but since it got on the agenda at 9 o'clock or whatever it was last night, right. I have no back time to look at uh, anything. I just, by accident, re-looked at the agenda because it didn't print right off my printer. Sure. And I found this new stuff. So that's why I'm, you know... Uh, and we appreciate you being here, and that's why we're answering your question. And I appreciate that. Believe me. I'm, I'm, yeah. Thank you very much. You all have a good night. Mr. Wells, I just want to add one more thing. I take yes. that we're doing too much too fast as a compliment. The city, the city, to me, when I came in here, was way behind. Yes, I we got a lot of catching up to do. We got a lot of fixing to do. I ran on this position. Um, before I was even elected, I said we were going to change the planning department. We were going to invite people to town. We were going to make things happen in this town. That's exactly what this position does. I had no idea that yeah. I, I, Chief Elbert would apply for it, um, but I, I trust I my administration. So. So I ask uh, yep. Not because I'm being a but I'm just yep. trying to uh, figure out to make sure that everything's above board. Yep. I know. I appreciate it. Oh, we, we appreciate that. And I appreciate the compliment. Any other comments? Anybody else in the public that would like to talk? Seeing nobody, I'll close the public hearing. We have a motion by Burns, seconded by Welch um, to approve 16K. There's no other comments. Uh, please vote. We have, we have four yes votes and two no votes with Mr. Cook and Mr. Shannon voting no. Thank you. So we move to uh, 16L, approve and authorize the mayor to sign, to, to sign the employment agreement with Mark Elbert for the community development director position. Councilman Pricer. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move to approve 16L. I'll second that. Motion by Preister, seconded by Welch to approve 16L. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, please vote. We have four yes votes and two no votes with Mr. Cook and Mr. Shannon voting no. Thank you. Item 17, administration reports. Do uh, we have any comments before we enter those into the record? And uh, I'll take this moment just to uh, welcome Mr. Elbert to the administration team. Thank you, Mayor. Yep. 
We're glad to have you. Uh, with that, uh, close session none, 19. Uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Make a motion we adjourn. I'll second it. Motion by Shannon, seconded by Welch. Please vote. Mayor, is that debatable? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I would just like to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Shalom, We Chozani in Lakota, and may we have peace on earth finally come to us, and at least peace in the chamber. Thank you. Ditto. Thank you. Did we vote? Okay, we're adjourned. All voting yes.